Hi, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. We've been having a lot of craziness with the computer today, so bear with me for being late. Um, I just wanted to let you know this week is going to be kind of crazy for me. We've got a lot of relatives um, probably in end-of-life situations in the hospital, and we've got a funeral going on this week as well. So I wanted to come to you and talk to you briefly. Um, today, tomorrow, I've got one of those crazy Almond Bowl shows on. Um, and then the rest of the week, I hope to come back to our book, uh, Life in Union with Mary. So stay tuned. Um, this morning, I wanted to share with you first about how I got stuck this morning. I was trying to pray the rosary, right? And somehow I got on Sermon of the Mount and I just, I just couldn't stop meditating on the Sermon of the Mount. And I was just thinking about how um, people now discount this as a miracle. Even they're like, ah, well, they only come to the men, not the women. So clearly there were tons of women there and the women all packed a lunch because that's what women do, right? When God walks down the street, we go, mm, give me a minute. I got to pack a lunch. No. What the heck? Who came up with that theory? Yes, God is love. And I do believe the people shared once God, God was giving them something that they shared afterwards. I don't believe the women when they saw or heard that God was coming, um, even if they didn't think he was God yet, that the most amazing rabbi of all time is walking down your street because he's trying to get to a mountain, right? To have a little retreat. And, and there he is. He's right there. Like you don't have to walk for days to see him. You don't have to join a caravan. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. He's right there. No, I'm not stopping to pack a lunch. I am, and my friends know, I am the mom with the backpack that has everything. My kid's 25. I still pack my backpack like that. But Jesus walks down the street. I'd be lucky if I remembered I owned a backpack. I am taking off. There's not seven books in there. I'm not grabbing a rosary. I'm just going. It's, it's Jesus. Like, I don't need the rosary if it's Jesus walking down the street. I don't believe these women stopped and packed lunches for everyone. I just, I just, I just can't see it. Um, I, it's hard for us to imagine living in biblical times and what it was like for them. Um, but you're not letting Jesus out of your sight. Like, if he gets in a boat, he could go anywhere. You might never see him again. This is your one shot. You're not letting him out of your sight. And Jesus had pity on them. He had pity on them. You know, he's drained. He needs time. And he had pity on them. So he came to find the lost, but he stayed for everyone. He did. The, the people were just begging him for more. And they may have been the 99, but he had pity on them. And he stayed and he taught them. And he gave them a great lesson. He knows he's going to take a little break, right? But he stopped. He's like, okay, I hear you guys. You need more. I'm going to give you something that's going to sustain you. I'm going to give you a rich, beautiful food. So he did. He not only filled up their bellies, literally, with bread and fish. He filled up their souls with something that would last them the rest of their lives if they never saw him again. Right? And... Oh my goodness, does your preacher do that every Sunday? Does he fill you up so you can at least make it to the next week? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Right now we have um, Father Angelo preached yesterday. And it may have been a longer sermon than normal. I'm not even sure because I... <laughs> when Father Angelo gives a sermon, he like presents something simply from one angle. And then he goes a little bit deeper and a slightly different angle. A little bit deeper and a different angle. But he ties in the first two. And he keeps going that way. And it's it's a spiral higher and higher. Um, it's like going to a seminar. It's so amazing. Um, that is something I can ponder all week. I hope he's making videos of that so I can replay it. If not, Father Angelo, I'd love to see that. Um, and I think they broadcast, so I might be able to find it on YouTube. So that was at the Shrine of St. Anthony um, on Sunday. What was it? The 20, I want to say the 26th. On Sunday, the 26th in uh, 2020. So I'm hoping that's out there. I'm going to look for it, it later. Because, <laughs> whoo. So Jesus knew that these people were so hungry, they could not let him out of their sight. So he fed them literally, right? He's always doing that. He's doing something sensory for us. To be a sign of what's really going on. So he was really filling them up. Filling their soul. He was feeding their soul completely. 
at the same time, he's filling their bodies completely, right? That's so beautiful. And I think, I think we miss that in the, in the Sermon on the Mount so much more. Really, I mean, it's so complex, right? You could ponder just that scene for the rest of your life and be lost. And um, let me see if I've got her name correct. So Ashitha had commented that she'd like to hear more about the rosary. And I've got a couple videos on the rosary, friends, but I'm totally going to prepare a new one because the rosary is the same way, right? It's meditating on the life of Christ. And we could do it all day, every day for weeks and months and never mind all the virtues in there. So after um, this week with Life in Union with Mary, or possibly it could come out in here, um, there's definitely going to be another episode on the rosary coming up. If you have any topics you'd like to hear, don't forget to put that down in the comments because that's the only way I'm going to know. A lot of people like to text me directly, um, and that's great, but then other people aren't seeing it. I really like everyone to try and build up a little community here, so if you could do that. And don't forget, if any of these videos move you, then please like them, um, share, and subscribe because that's the only way it's going to get out to other people. I won't lie, I've got 28 subscribers, and so not everyone's seeing this. If you like it, you've got to be the ones to share it. I need you. I can't do it without you. Um, it's the only way it's going to get out there to other people. Um, and I realized today the one thing we didn't do, we started Life in Union with Mary, and we never did a book walk. And you know me, that's not something I don't do, so... Let's stop and look at the book a little more in depth, and then I'll probably let you go. So Life in Union with Mary, we talked about how it was by Father Newbert. Um, this is actually translated from the third French edition in 1954. Might not have told you that. Uh, when was it? The first... I don't know when it was originally written in French, though. Because that was the third edition in French in 1954. Um, and it was not printed then until 1959. It was reprinted in 2014 by the Academy of the Immaculate. Um, and let's see here. So first, there's a letter from the Bishop of Liege, Liege in Belgium, um, recommending it. The introductory letter, then there's the author actually has a foreword for us. And don't worry, he's got footnotes so you can look up anything that he's referencing to. And it's those are both short. They're just one page front and back. And then we do hit the contents. So preliminary considerations. We've already done that section. Ordinary Union with Mary is part one. And we did start out with um, Union of Thought, but there are six of those. And then we have Union of Will. And then we have Union of Sentiments. Union with Mary and general activity. So these are all different ways that we can live our union with Mary. Union with Mary during spiritual exercises. Spiritual work in union with Mary. Union with Mary in the practice of the virtues. Union with Mary in the virtue of charity. So if you want to look at any practices um, before we get to them, there's 41 of them there. So life in union with Mary, there's lots of, it's like a menu. There's lots of things to choose from. And then if any time you need something new, it, the old one's not working or it's just not fitting your style, don't worry. He's got 41 just there. And then there's part two is mystical union with Mary. And again, it's going to start out with some explanation work. And um, there's 10 things there. And then there's a conclusion. And wait, friends, because I didn't do the book walk. You don't know about this. There actually is an index. So if you wanted, like the rosary was your jam, for instance. Let's look this up. Can is it? Does it say anything specifically about the rosary? Yep. Rosary, Aid to Faith, page 174. So this index is probably pretty thorough. It's, I mean, it's tinier print than the rest of the book. And it's one, two, four, five. It's six pages front and back. So it's, that's a pretty good index. Um, I did also want to point out to you that I got this um, from Women of Grace directly. I believe they also sell it through the EWTN religious catalog. But if you are doing a big group activity, you can contact the Academy of the Immaculate directly. Um, and if you have a large group doing it, they do offer discounts for large groups. Now, EWTN may do that as well. I don't know. So you could reach out to them first if you'd like to support them. Um, and then there's all kinds of of course great it's so funny because it's all these people endorsing the book 
but it's modern people endorsing a book from the 50s. So I think that's kind of kind of cool. And one of them, of course, is Father Don Calloway, the surfing priest. He's the first one. Um, I don't know if you'll know all of them. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so one of the things that it's already done for me, um, this summer I had a priest recommend to me in confession, no less, that I need it. Like it's the second I walked in the door, he's like, are you wearing a miraculous medal? And I was like, no. He's like, <gasps> it was just like he had this thing. And he, he probably talked to me for 20 minutes to a half an hour about the miraculous medal and why I in particular needed it. It was pretty amazing. Um, so I ran to the bookstore and I can't really wear things around my neck. My neck tends to get irritated if I have any kind of metal around my neck. Um, my, my towel cross, this cord, um, doesn't seem to irritate. So, um, I thought I saw this little miraculous metal bracelet and it's macrame. It's got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tiny miraculous metals on it. And so I, I wear this all the, t well, I can't say all the time. Occasionally it gets left around the house. I think you've met me by now. You know, I'm, I do that. Um, because I don't really want to get it dirty if I'm cleaning, I take it off and then where is it? Um, and that's part of the not multitasking we're working on, right friends? Anyway, so I've had this for a while and because I do tend to leave it, I'm not always wearing the miraculous medal. And that was kind of weighing on me a little bit. And I have so many like randomly around the house because it's something that people give you all the time, right? Anytime you go to retreat, you're given a miraculous medal, it seems. And so I got one. Um, I found these cute little jump rings. So it's not the regular jewelry jump ring. It's one like you have your keys on, one of those twisty guys. So it's much sturdier because I've found before when I wear a holy metal around my neck, um, um, especially Our Lady of Guadalupe and St. Francis, I tend to clutch at them at night if I'm stressed out about something and I've, I've ripped them off. I've woken up and they're in my hand. Um, and so I have these really hefty duty jump rings that I've gotten, again, it's not technically a jump ring. It's one of those, it's the size of a jump ring, but it's one of those twisties like your keychains on. Um, and I actually started out with just a plastic miraculous metal to see if I could handle it. And so I've put it on my towel and we've been talking about how St. Francis was incredibly Marian. So I don't feel like I'm going to get in trouble for this at all from other Franciscans, but we'll find out later. And um, so it's usually hidden behind, but sometimes it slips in front and I just... I'm really liking it. It's working out. This was kind of a test one with the plastic one. And I think it's working great. Um, so I'm kind of excited because originally she did ask that the metal be worn around your neck. So I'm kind of excited that I found a way now finally to do that. And I think this book has inspired me. So it's kind of a sing sign to me that, yeah, this is the time. This is the time to go deeper in my Marian consecration. And at least in this form, and I'm going to keep looking at the book and pick out some other practices. We're not going to work our way through all of them. I'm going to pick out someone, some ones that I think fit with you guys. Um, so if you have anything um, that you really want to do, I'm going to grab them for you. If not, you can go get the book yourself, of course. Um, and I totally encourage you to do that either way, but I'm going to try and pick one special devotions in here that I think are really going to work for you. Okay, friends, have a blessed week. Again, um, I'm headed out to a funeral. I've got a lot of relatives um, in really critical situations and so, some little ones on the way as well. So if you could just pray for all of, all of my family, that would be amazing. And I've been praying for you, of course. And um, yes, yeah, so we're going to do that tomorrow when I'm at the funeral. You're going to be watching Almond Bowl 3. And it's getting kind of exciting. I I'm really getting to know some things about my husband that I didn't know before. So watch Almond Bowl and it's a goofy way to hang out with your spouse, but I'm learning about him and I'm really enjoying things that are happening in my life um, by intentionally spending time with my family in new and different ways. Um, okay, friends. So God bless. And then of course, so um, today you have this, tomorrow you have Almond Bowl 3, and then we're going to jump back with Life in Union with Mary. If you've got ideas for next week, let me know. God bless, friends. Bye.